Hi, welcome to Diving Into Deep Waters. I am your host, Erin Rowling. And recently I shared a traumatic story about the bathroom. Well, I have another one. (laughs) It's, I don't know, me in the bathroom, not mixing lately. So, I'll tell you. I was getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. If, you know, this is what happens as you get older. You have to pee. It's just how it, how it is. It is crazy. When you're younger, you never think about how much fluid you consume before bed. But as you get older, I think to myself, if I drink this right now, I'm going to have to pee in the middle of the night. And that's just annoying. And if you're a person my age or older, you totally get what I'm talking about. And if you're a young person, you're, we're letting you know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> I remember thinking when I was younger, these things will never happen to me. Well, they do. They have a way of catching up with you. So anyways, I'm going to the bathroom and we, our room is completely like pitch black. We have no lights. We have a fan. We're just no noise. Like that's how we sleep. And so I'm going to the bathroom. Like I know my room. I know how to get to my bathroom. It's in our room. So I, I know the way I've do this quite often, almost every night. And so I get in there or close to the bathroom and I hear something and I think to myself, why am I hearing a noise? Like it kind of freaked me out. And then I thought, oh, I think the toilet is running. Why is the toilet running? I don't know because we just had it fixed not that long ago. So why is it running? I don't know. I'm going to have to tell Paul that in the morning that the toilet is running. So I proceed to continue towards the toilet and I hear something again. Here's the thing. I (laughs) don't wake up well. (laughs) Like it's hard for me to process things when I'm waking up. It's not like my husband, he gets up, he's bam, he's ready to go. Me, like if I have to wake up instantly, like I have to go back and lay down because I just cannot like, I don't know. I just can't do it. And so I (laughs) heard something my brain was not processing what I was hearing. And so I'm like, it's freaking me out, but I have to pee, you guys. So I just continue going towards the toilet. And then I hear, Aaron, I'm going to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, it's Paul. So yeah, I I couldn't see him. I couldn't. And then I, I mean, that literally, if I wasn't freaked out before, like I jumped, I think I might've yelled. I'm not sure. My poor husband was like, what is she doing? I've told her twice. I'm going to the bathroom. Why is she continuing to come towards me? I don't know if he could see me, but I couldn't see him. So yeah, that that's, it's very hard to go back to sleep after you've literally thought like someone something was happening. I, again, couldn't even tell you what I thought was happening because my brain was just not processing what was happening. But yeah, that was my second bathroom scare. And I'm good with two. I really don't need any more. So anyways, I also want to give a shout out here to John Granton because John on Easter Sunday left me a nice little bag of my favorite Reese's Pieces eggs. I walk up and I see this bag. I'm like, who did this? And they're like, John did. And he's like, hi, I was listening to your podcast and you were talking about these and I was in the store and there was one bag left. And I was like, that's for Aaron. So I was like super thankful, like super kind, super thoughtful. The only problem is, is the next day I was starting, or I'm still on it, yay me, is basically like a gut reset kind of thing. If you don't know or do know, I have a lot of like issues with my body. So once in a while, it just helps to like go back to the basics because you know, like sometimes you do really good with your eating and then sometimes you don't and on the go all the time, I grab quick things and they're not serving my body very well, like processed food. And so go back to the basics and I was like, I, I can't, surprisingly enough, these aren't on the plan of resetting your gut. Huh. I, who would have thought? So I did share them because I probably ate a significant amount of them. So thank you, John, for feeding my obsession, but nobody else buy me anymore because I'm on this gut thing and I can't eat them right now. And I don't think I have the willpower not to eat those things. Thankfully, Easter is done. We have till next year. Maybe I won't even like them by next Easter. Who knows? So 
yeah, here we go. I will say this real quick. So my kids, I was telling them like, they were asking me what was for dinner or something like that. And I said, listen, mom's doing this gut reset health. And Joseph immediately says to me, can you wait till I go to college to do that, please? What? Like, to support, and Abby's like wrinkling up her nose when she came home from volleyball. She's like, what did you make? I told her what I made. And she's like, mm, I think I'll stick something in the air fryer. Come on, support your mom, you guys. Like, such such support over here in the rolling home. They're super excited to get about the next 30 days. Actually, by the time this airs, we should be halfway done. So, and we'll all be alive. Nobody's going to die from eating healthy. Or so they, they don't think that, but I know that. So I want to get into the topic because we are going to go backwards a little bit to Easter. You guys are like, Easter is so done. We're still talking about Reese's peanut butter eggs. We're still talking about Easter. Erin, we're done. Well, I had this thought come into my mind after Easter because Easter was, so in ministry, Easter is one of our biggest, probably besides Christmas, it's definitely one of our biggest holidays. And so there's, there's a lot that goes into Easter. I feel like there's also a lot that goes into Christmas. Those, those two holidays at a church are just like, you'll see TikToks a lot about Christmas and Easter and just like it, it's great. I'm, I am not complaining. Okay. But it just takes a lot out of you. There's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of additional preparation. And this Easter felt a little bit more difficult than normal. I know there's been, and even still by the time this airs, just tons and tons of sickness going around. So that has really affected like things I wanted to do for our worship service because we couldn't get all get together to practice. Also, when you have volunteers in your church, you're kind of at the mercy of, you know, everybody's schedule. And not everyone works a nine to five or can just adjust their schedule accordingly. So you're kind of working around what people can give you unless you get to your church hires a band and great for you. But most of us are working with volunteers, which is phenomenal. They're giving their time. You appreciate it so much. But, um, and I think too, there's also like this pressure with Easter and Christmas because I don't know, you think about the people that are inviting their their loved ones or their neighbor or whatever and they're like hey come check out my church like we've got these special things going on and you want to make impact you want to make an impression not like a for your church but for Jesus <laughs> and so I don't know like all the things going on plus thinking okay like maybe this is the first time someone's coming into a church building that happens sometimes so all of these things are going on in your mind and you want it to be perfect. You want it to be great. Um, I had a lot, like I, as you know, can be a bit of a procrastinator. I readily admit that. And I think I had more on my plate than I thought I did. I don't know. Sometimes you think, oh, I can get it all done. And then as you're like looking at everything, you're kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe I can't. <laughs> So like Good Friday, we had, we were part of our community, um, Good Friday service. And then I came home, I recorded a podcast, I went up to the church, our drama team had a special during our service. So we needed to go check and make sure that everything worked well for that. And then I was like, and I'm just going to throw some paint on these things that were going to be on the stage. No biggie. Well, you know, sometimes those things that you think are just like, I mean, I don't know if paint is ever a quick process, but in my mind, it was going to take like an hour. I was going to be done if you were good to go. Well, it took a lot longer than that. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I know you're all like, oh, Aaron, you did not think that through. And you would be correct. I really didn't think it through, but I got it done. It was late. And, you know, just thinking of, you know, even like Easter baskets and cinnamon rolls and all of the things that we, Abby said she wanted to decorate eggs and I think she forgot because she never brought it up again. And guess what? I don't know. Maybe this is a terrible mom. Maybe I'm a bad mom. I don't know. But I didn't bring it up. 
because she didn't bring it up. And so, and she's never brought it up. So none of you go say, so you didn't, did you color eggs, Abby, for Easter? None of you do that to me, okay? We're just gonna, she'll probably remember next year. She'll probably say, oh, remember when I wanted to color eggs and then we didn't? Okay, I'll live with that. We'll take care of that next year. But right now, I'm not gonna um, take take that right now. So anyways, uh, and here's the thing too, was kind of funny getting Easter decorations up at church is I'm just gonna give you a little advice when it comes to your church, okay? Or maybe things, people in general. So someone told someone, okay, it went through the group line that the Christmas decorations were still up. Here's the thing. The Christmas decorations were not still up. We had some trees with lights around them. They added to the stage. And it was not just my opinion, but also my friends who said, hey, let's keep them up. And then in the in the windows were snowflakes and some trees with lights. Again, not Christmassy, more wintry. Okay, let's say that. So anyways, someone said, yeah, I got a text asking when you were going to take these things down. And here's here's the thing, you guys, is if you see something and you think, when are they going to take care of that? Offer. Offer to take care of it. Because chances are that the person is busy. <laughs> they maybe just have a lot on their plate. And that's just obviously because it's not down down yet. Which, by the way, in Michigan, one day it can be 70 degrees. One day it can be snowing. You know, I don't know. So it's fine. It's totally fine. But if you see something, offer. Before you make a comment, which actually someone said, um, Aaron did take them down. And they said, no, they're still up. And actually, I had taken them down. So there you go. I don't even know who it is. So maybe you're watching and you're like, it was me. I don't even know who you are. It's fine. I don't need to know who you are. It's better than I don't know who you are. <laughs> but just a little friendly piece of advice to pass on to you. You know, offer. Offer to help if you see something that needs to be done. People do this in church life a lot. They'll say, we think you should. And then I say, oh, would you like to do that? Oh, well, no, I don't want to do it. Well, then zippity your lippies and let's move on anyways so there's just a, a little freebie for you in this podcast so anyways I was behind as I said and uh but we got to Easter and here's here's the great thing like all this pressure that we put on ourselves all of these feelings that all to make everything it's kind of like anything right you you put up like a wedding or a baby shot, like all these like events that we have in our life. We put all of this pressure on ourselves to make it like, I, I love details. Details are important to me. I want it done well. You know, that's just how I am. And so, but it's at the end of the day, it's like, first of all, probably doesn't matter. Now, maybe at Easter, the Christmas decorations being up or winter decorations being up. Yeah, maybe not. But <laughs> no decorations? Would it have been the end of the world? Would people still have felt Jesus? I think so. Because Jesus is not like, well, that church did not get decorations up. So from me rising from the dead. So no, I'm going to skip over that church. That doesn't happen. And I mean, I was blown away at Easter. Actually, sometimes it's hard for me to tell like when I'm on stage and leading worship, like how many people are there. But what was crazy was I knew they had put a lot of extra chairs in because, you know, it's a bigger service. And I found out they literally took every chair in the building and put it in there. So we maxed out. I mean, people were sitting against the walls. I mean, it was it was an overflow, and but it was just awesome. And even our second service, which is more... Lately attended, you'd think it'd be the other way where people like, oh, let's go to the second service. Nope. They like to go to the first service in our church, which is great. And it was just like, I mean, and Paul and I <laughs> like to rate our services. Some of you are like, okay, that does not sound very Christian. But you, you think about a job when you're doing a job and you think like, how well did we do? 
And even though this is ministry, you also think, did we do a good job? Because you want to do it well. You want to have excellence. You want Jesus to come and show up in your church. Let me tell you that the most importantly. And so we kind of dissect the service and stuff like that. And after Easter service, we were just humbled that people were there, especially, you know, when you started something in your living room and then like you've maxed out your space for a service, you're just like, wow, God's, God can really use anybody (laughs) because we know who we are. And yet he is so kind and gracious. And so we were flying high. I, I will say that. I think we felt like, wow, that It was a home run service. Everyone was on point. Everything went well because you have all of these moving pieces. Are they going to go well? Are people going to have a place to sit? I mean, they had to open the doors to the lobby and people were out in the lobby because we didn't have enough space. I mean, it was a great day. The thing with a great day, I have noticed, and I don't know if you've ever noticed when like something amazing happens in your life. And then, It's like all of a sudden something comes along that tries to steal your joy, steal your happiness, steal your excitement, steal your like, um, your high, if you will, of excitement. Not the wrong kind of high, you guys, the right kind of high. And this happens a lot of ministry, but I think it happens with all of us in our everyday life. And for us in ministry, sometimes... It waits till Monday. (laughs) Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it hits right after service. Sometimes it hits, someone will walk up to us and say something right before service is going to start. And you'll be like, "Um, timing. (laughs) And you learn nothing about timing. And I think not only did we feel like it was a good service, but I mean, we had received some pretty impactful texts from people just saying like, you know, the message really helped me get through some things that I had been carrying with me and I felt like I walked out so much lighter than I had walked in. And one guy was like, how did you know what I needed to hear? Like, have you been living in my house? Like things where it was like, you knew people walked away and it wasn't just a service, but they had met Jesus, which is what we're, like I said, what we're after. And so, but I find often when we have these highs, we have these moments, and this is the title of the podcast, Joy Stealers, things that just come along and they steal our joy. And we were we were tested pretty quickly. Now, this is not a major way, but I'll just tell you the story anyways. But um, it's Easter and we don't have family around us, so... Paul's like, hey, I'm going to take you out. And listen, this girl is never going to pass up a meal that I don't have to cook. And so, and I was like, my cleanse starts the next day. Let's go eat some food. And we knew it was going to be a wait. We, We understood that. We were fine. We all ate something before we went so that we weren't hangry when we got there. And so we got there. They're like, it's a 40 minute wait. We're like, fine. It's fine. We're just going to sit here and talk and you know, just chill out, kind of just decompress from the day, all of those things. And we get to our table, they bring the bread, you know, I can't eat it, but my family loves it. And they are happy with that. And I enjoy watching them eat it. And I can smell it. (laughs) But we got our salads, we're like, okay, this is good, you know, and everything. And then we waited. And then we waited. And then we waited and like, you know, obviously it's, it's Easter. Like you're like, okay, it takes a little, a little longer. Now I will be honest. I was a little hard on the waitress because I didn't feel like she had very much joy serving us. So anyways, I'm thinking to myself, you know, don't be too hard on her. You know, I make mention of it. We move on. But her food doesn't come. And she comes over and she's like, hey, I just want to apologize. Like your food was supposed to go from one computer to the next computer to the kitchen and it didn't and so I'm so sorry like it's it's in you're good it's just gonna be a little bit of a wait and we think okay so we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and she comes back and she apologizes again like it didn't get to the kitchen and I don't know how it didn't get to the kitchen now Abby got her salad which 
I don't know how that girl got her salad and none of us got the rest of her food. Not, and someone said, well, maybe it was someone else's salad. Here's the thing. Abby's very specific. She gets the chicken house salad with no chicken, no tomato, no almonds, and no onions. What are the chances that someone else gets the same exact salad with ranch? No, I don't think so because nobody else is doing that with their salad. So she has it. So she, she gets to start eating and the rest of us are just sitting there like, okay. And then she comes back and she's crying. Like, looks like she's about to cry kind of thing at first. And she's like, I am I feel awful, like your order still has not gone in. Then she starts to cry, and I'm like, oh, honey, we are not worth crying over. Maybe we're worth a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> it's going to be okay. And she's like, I made sure it is in. We're going to take a meal off. We're going to give you free desserts, all of this stuff. And I'm like, just bring the food, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And by this time... I will say our joy, we didn't have as much joy as when we started, okay? And the hangry is coming in. We started to rate who should be the most hangry, and it came that it should have been me because I didn't have bread like the rest of my family had. And so finally our food came. She feels terrible. I'm like, I give her a hug, you know, even though I was hard on her. I'm like, I'm going to give this girl a hug because I don't want to see her cry. And then we you know, we just didn't enjoy our food. I'm not, I'm just going to be honest. We actually skipped dessert. We're like, we, we've been here for three hours just for food, like three, three hours and 40 minutes. Actually, we're ready to go. We're done. <laughs> so, and we were kind, we, you know, whatever we got Tim Hortons on the way home. It was, it was much better. You know, Tim Hortons in our family makes us all happy. I told that to my kids. I was telling them the story and they're like, but did you get Tim Hortons? And I said, yes, we did. And they were like, okay. So not a big, big thing to steal our joy. But I mean, I felt like it robbed from our joy a little bit. But the next morning is when we were significantly tested, I would say, with our joy. Because we were, uh, I got up in the morning, felt so grateful, thankful for everything that had happened on Sunday. I'm out here with my husband. We're having our Monday morning coffee. And I realize I do this a lot, which if you're watching the video, you see me doing this a lot. And if you're not, you don't know what I'm doing <laughs> with my hands. Sometimes you don't know what to do with them. Anyways, <laughs> so um, we're having coffee and then bam, my son comes out and we've been working on FAFSA, which if you don't know what that is, it's for college, it's money. And you submit forms like months ago, you're waiting, 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 hoping you did everything right, only to find out for us that we missed one signature. And they even show you where you missed it, but here's the kicker. They don't let you fix it. They make you wait a while before you can fix it. And all that just flooded all of these questions of like, how does that affect because um, for his college, the sooner you do your FAFSA, the more money you get, which money, people, you want as much money for college as you can possibly get. And so the literally the, all the joy that had been in our room, like every ounce of it was like whoosh, sucked out. I mean, like gone. And we were just like so heavy in our hearts. We were... I don't know. It like one second we're celebrating, the next next second we're like, what is going on? And I mean, have you ever felt like that? Are we the only ones <laughs> that have every like life is going great, everything's going so well, and then just in a matter of a sec, I mean, I don't even know if it was a second, if it was a nanosecond, how fast our joy was taken away from us. I feel like it was stolen from us, and I don't know why it seems to happen the most like when something great happens in your life, when you're celebrating something and then whoosh, it's just gone. And that really disturbed me. And I thought, here's a topic. We're going to dive into what, because I think there's more than one thief. I think there's a lot of thieves. We don't have time to get into them all. So we're just going to kind of go into a couple of them. 
But I think there are so many thieves that try to steal. They do steal our joy. They try to steal our joy. And there's this verse, and we all know it. It's in John 10.10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. This is a verse we've talked a lot about before. And the, the interesting thing is, is like, We don't physically, like in that moment, I didn't physically see Satan come into my house and take my joy with him. That's not how that went down. I mean, that'd be super creepy, right? I think in the spiritual world, that's what's happening. We're not going to get into that. But, and here's the thing, thieves are not usually seen. You don't, if you saw someone taking something, if I would have physically seen Satan take my joy, I would have been like, hold up. No, no, no. I will take that back. If a thief is coming into your house, like Paul's family got robbed when he was younger, they did not see the thief come in. If they had seen it, they would have stopped it. But they sure saw the aftermath of what the thief did. And that's what happens. We don't see him taking it from us, but we sure do see the aftermath of it. So, and And sometimes it takes a while to see that. Sometimes we don't recognize that our joy has just been completely stolen from us. And so we're going to go into a couple of different ways that I think are ways that we see our joy stolen. Or not ways that they steal it, but the thieves that steal our joy. There we go. So the first one, circumstances, which is what we dealt with right after Easter. Our circumstances changed and it was like, gone. Just with with a snap of a finger, when things were good, we had joy. As soon as the tide turned, our joy was gone. It was completely robbed of us. And why is that? Why do circumstances hold so much power over our emotions, right? And I mean, I don't know if you've ever asked yourself, why? why when something happens, does that affect me can affect me negatively like so quickly. I don't know. Here's the thing, especially since circumstances are usually, not all the time, okay, but usually they're out of our control. There is a situation we were facing last week and it was significant. I mean, I think we were downplaying it. I think we were trying to diminish it in some way because it was it was heavy and um it was something that we it was stealing our joy whether we want to admit it or not it was stealing our joy to a certain level and here's the thing there was nothing we could do about it we couldn't say oh i'm going to do this this and this and this and i can fix it that's great when you can do that but most of the time It's a situation you have no control over. And so why do we put so much, like, allow circumstances to steal our joy when, I mean, if you can fix it, go fix it. Get your joy back. But a lot of times it's like that you gave something the power to steal your joy when you, you can't even do anything about it. Isn't that crazy? Whew. If, here's the thing, if circumstances have that much power, if they can steal our joy that easily, we're going to live a very rough life because of that very fact, because of the very fact that you don't have a lot of control over things. It's going to be rough for you, rough for me, if all the times that I can't control something are allowed, okay, I'm going to use that word allowed to steal my joy. It's almost like when a circumstance happens and you just say, well, I might as well just leave the door open. Like if if my home, if I just left all my doors open and I put signs and said, hey, thieves, go ahead, go for it. Have a good time. Take whatever you want. Circumstances If we're not on our game, if we're not paying attention, and I'm not speaking as someone who has who has this and it does a good job of it, okay? I'm speaking to it because we let it steal our joy. I'm being honest. That's what happened in our family. 
And so it's like saying, oh, here's the door wide open. Go ahead and take it. Circumstances, mm, whew, we need to pay attention to. I mean, circumstances happen all the time to all of us. But what are we going to do about it? Hmm, that's up to us. So the second one is fun. All right, you ready for it? People. Ooh. <laughs> I think, honestly, we had more joy when we were quarantining with COVID because I think we had less interaction with people. Here's the thing, though. That wasn't reality. We got a small sliver of time where we didn't have to interact with a lot of people. A lot of people want to stay like that because they were like, ooh, I found I have more joy when I'm not around people. But that's not reality unless you want to go be a hermit and go live in the woods somewhere and never see anybody or talk to anybody, which maybe some of you have done that. I don't know. But the thing with with people is they have, and we've talked about this, people have so much power. They can give us life or they can give us death. And it's so easy. One comment from somebody, one like you can do something and 50 people are like, you did a great job at that. But the one person who said, mm, I didn't like that. Mm, I didn't feel that way about it. Dissipates, literally. It's like those people, those 50 people never told you you did a good job. That one person overrides everything that the other 50 people said. Because it's a thief. People can be thieves of our joy. Now, before you start saying, naming off, yeah, this person steals my joy. And yeah, that person steals my joy. And ooh, that person steals my joy. This can go the other way because you, my friend, and me, we can also steal people's joy. We've all been guilty of it. Nobody can say, I just spread joy wherever I go. No, I'm sorry. You probably have depleted somebody along the way, as well as I have, of their joy. It goes both ways. We, there's a, a Bible verse that says, you know, be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Okay, light of the world. Don't take the flat. It's like a flashlight, you know, you use it to see where you need to go. But have you ever had that one person who takes the flashlight and they like beam it right in your face and you're like, well, okay, get it out of my eyes. Like it's not helping you. Or the salt of the earth. Don't take your whole shaker of salt of yourself and pour it all over somebody and they're like, this, I can't even eat this. This is unedible. What you're giving me is unedible because you've, po you've poured so much salt over it. I mean, salt is a, it's a fine line, right? There's just enough salt. There's not, I watch all those shows, you know, like the baking shows and it's like, yeah, it's bland. Not enough salt or, oh my gosh, that's all I can taste. Salt overpowers. It's It goes both ways. Either people are taking your joy or maybe sometimes you're taking people's joy. You're the thief. Ooh, did you ever think of that? Okay, third one, things. I read a story about Abraham Lincoln and he was walking down the street with his two sons and they were like crying and fighting and being kids, I guess. <laughs> and a friend was like, I don't know if they were like, what's the matter with your kids, Abraham Lincoln? I don't know. I don't know if this is when he was like president or he was just a regular Joe walking down the street. I don't know. But Lincoln replied this. He said the same thing that's wrong with the whole world. I have three walnuts and each boy wants two. Thanks. We're not satisfied. We, I mean, I'll be honest. And maybe you're like, that's super silly, but it's true. Usually the things that we think are silly actually are super applicable to things that maybe we need to look at in our lives because our desire for things can steal our joy. Sometimes, you know, like I'll watch uh, like a show for like house hunters or renovating houses. My husband's really into that and he was watching that the other day. I mean, this, this house was, I think, was it $23 million? I'm not going to lie. I could imagine myself in that house. 
my husband's like, oh crap, I'm going to stop watching these shows. No, it just, it was beautiful. I mean, I thought, my goodness, look at that pool and look at the lounge chairs. You know, I've got these little lounge chairs that when you sit on them too long, they like leave the imprints on your butt and like not the super comfiest thing. But you know what? Things. We can look at things. We can think at, look at the things that our friends have. Look at their homes or what they're able to afford or all of those things. And those things can easily steal our joy. We don't often look at that as a joy stealer, but it is. Jesus even speaks to it in Luke 12, 15. He says, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. That is not joy in the things that you have. Here's the thing. You can't take them with you. That's why the Bible says store up your treasures in heaven. Like do things that Jesus is going to be like, okay, that was an impact on someone's life. Or those kinds of things are the things that Jesus like, like, uh, yep, there you go. You can take that with you. My husband often says this. You can't take things, but you can take people. Just think on that for a second. The, the house that you're looking at. That you're like, or, you know, like our bathrooms, they're like 70s. They're from the 70s. Like I have a rose colored tub, you guys. She pretty. I keep thinking someday that's going to come back in. And guess what? We're going to be in style then, right? <laughs> hey, I see someone redo their bathroom and I'm like, oh, I I let it steal a little bit of my joy because I like their bathroom. I'm like, how to, how nice to get ready in this. I have a bathroom. I should be thankful. And I am. I. You choose what you do with that. You're going to look at other people's stuff and be like, oh, I wish I had that. Or be like, hey, find. No, you're not going to steal my joy over that. I am thankful for these things. The last one. Worry. Mm. As our kids get older, we kind of start to see more of their personalities come out. And I've noticed that with one of my kids. And they... I have realized they worry a lot, probably more than any, I don't, I don't know. And maybe it's just the phase and you're a teenager and you have a lot to worry about, you feel like, and it seems silly to me sometimes. And I've, I read an article recently about when a kid worries about a sport, like what not to say. And I realized I was doing all the what not to say. I was like, okay, we got to switch this around. And just being more open to like, what are you worried about? And the other day I woke them up for something. And the first thing out of their mouth was, I'm, 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 I'm worried. I'm nervous. I'm scared. And I was like, why? Like, when that is the first thought in your mind, that's her first, their first reaction to me. I was like, why? And, and they, and they started to tell me why. And it was, it was really silly. I'm not going to lie. It was silly, but I needed to remember what I read in my article. And I was like, okay, well, let's talk about that. And we're going to pray about that. And we're going to, whoo. I think she got that gene from my mother-in-law because my mother-in-law was the queen of worry. I've told you that before. Like when she didn't have something to worry about, she found something to worry. She was worried that she didn't have something to worry about. I mean, that's just how she, but here's something I I read this statement. I was like, oh, this gets me because I feel like the other ones are kind of like outside jobs, but I feel like worry is an inside job. Did you hear that? It's an inside job job. See, circumstances, people, and things, they come to steal from us. They're the outside job, but worry starts in our mind. It starts with us, our thoughts. And Matthew 6, 25 says, Jesus says this. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Whoa, wait, what? Or what you will eat or drink. My family needs to hear that because they're always asking me what's for dinner. It stresses me out. Or about your body. Ooh, some of us, that, that's a hard one not to be consumed with your body. Or what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? 
it's so easy to worry, so easy for our joy to be robbed because we're worried. So how do we keep these thieves from stealing our joy? I'm not a master at this, so I'm going to be working on this myself. The answer is this. I believe we cultivate the right kind of mind. We, we, it starts with us. It, all of them, I guess all of them maybe start with an inside job and some of them are an inside job with an outside job and some are just an inside, worried, just an inside job. I don't know if that makes sense, but in, there's, um, this verse that Jesus says again, (laughs) these things I have spoken to you. So he's like, I also like, he's like, I've said this to you before, but I guess I need to say it again, which is true when it comes to our, all of those things there, we need to be told multiple times. I could probably do this podcast in multiple different ways, multiple different avenues, and we'd still would struggle with our joy being stolen. I just think that's who we are as humans, but we're going to not say, well, then I'm just going to give into it. We're going to keep going after it. So back to what Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you, not just remain in you, guess what else? And that your joy may be full. Hmm. Here's the best thing to do. When you recognize that your joy is being stolen from you, go to Jesus. That morning when I felt like our all of our joy had been sucked out of us, I looked at my husband and he looked at me and I said, we need to pray. And he said, I was just about to say that. And then I went and talked to my son and I said, listen, I know this just seems so overwhelming right now, but we're going to pray about it. And he said, mom, I've already been talking to Jesus about it. Go to him. First of all, he's never, (sighs) maybe what my daughter told me, my kid, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to throw anybody under the bus said to me about their worry seems silly to me, right? But here's the thing with God, it's never silly. He's never like, what? Why are you worried about that? Or why why do you, no, whatever it is, whatever thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy us, we can take it to Jesus and say, I know this maybe seems silly, but here it is. And he's like, okay, let's work through that. Maybe it's a mind reset. Maybe it's start to be thankful for the things that you have. Maybe it's saying, pray for that person. Ooh. <laughs> Do we like that one? Because eh, some of us are like, that person. Or Lord, help me not to steal people's joy. Like help, pray for yourself. Like help me. I feel like I'm taking people's joy. I don't want to do that. Or circumstances. God, this is completely out of my hands. There is nothing that I can do here. (sighs) And I feel like my joy is being robbed from me. Go to him. It's never silly. Even if it's silly to other people, it's never silly to him. And he will be there to give you joy and to, in it for it to read, because he gives joy that will remain. There's, There's false joy and there's real joy. We've talked about that. But the real joy, it only comes from Jesus. And it will remain in you and it will remain in full. So maybe at the end of this podcast, you need to just sit by yourself. Take a few moments. Say, are things stealing my joy? And if they are, which chances are there are things. Just say, Father... These things are stealing my joy and I need your joy because I need it to remain in me and I need it to be full in me. So go catch those thieves and get your joy back.